What is going on, guys? We are back with another video in our 49ers franchise, and there was supposed to be a stream, but shocking news coming out of San Fran. Jimmy Garoppolo announces his retirement at the age of 30. We always joked about, you know, the running backs always getting hurt, and, why, you know, how is he? how are these guys getting hurt? But Jimmy isn't, and he's getting hit probably harder than the running backs. It turns out, there was actually truth to that as he cites that he's been hit too many times. He appreciates, you know, the 49er support and it was an amazing run and it really was. It was an amazing, you know, several years, but he's calling it quits. He's going to retire at the top of his game. Of course, knowing as well that there was a chance he could have been replaced in the offseason, knowing that he's getting older. Not that he's, you know, regressing, but he's not playing any better he's playing at a pretty average rate and he's got that that cap the cap hit was at a very low two million dollars and he was taking up 40 million dollars of the cap room so as much as this is shocking it's not the only shocking news with that retirement Richard Sherman also announces his retirement along with right guard Brandon Brooks a lot of guys thinking about retiring on that cusp age 34 ish years old for both of them I believe and Jimmy Garoppolo is enough. It was it was enough for them to go. I don't know if it was worrisome about the contracts. What's the story? But yeah, no stream this time because we were caught off guard completely. And even though we will have a little bit of money to work with, we have some holes to fill on the team now. And we may need to make some trades to try to get to that top five to potentially draft the quarterback of the future. Niners fans thinking this is, you know, very similar to 2015 where you had a couple of guys like Patrick Willis, Chris Borland, Anthony Davis retiring. There was some names like Justin Smith. It was a huge year. Maybe not as big, but a little bit more shocking. Of course, you guys see the uh, resignings, Lake and Tomlinson. I think we have the money. I just don't think we can keep him. We have to go brand new business. Bud Dupree was great, but that's too much. Ryan Tannehill, I mean, he played well in replacement of Jimmy, but it's got to be a new name. It's got to be a new guy or somebody else in free agency. This team has known its winning ways too much, and they know, we know that we can't get it done with a name like Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. We just can't. Uh, we've seen some crazy... Uh, some crazy names here, though, speaking of on the top two. Everyone else, though, not super great. Any quarterbacks? Josh Rosen, that'd be interesting. Kirk Cousins could bring him in for a season, perhaps. All right, so here's some of our signings. Oh, Nicholas Moros, clearly the guy we want. Matt Parrott is a huge upgrade at center. And then Derwin freaking James. Now, the question is, do we play Derwin at safety, or does he play corner and basically give us potentially an upgrade over Sherman. Of course, he's not playing strong safety, but we could play him at free safety. Uh, 85 zone, 89 man. He is a better man corner. Uh, well, man defender. Uh, pretty damn fast. Of course, 6-2. Reinforcement, unfakeable, and enforcer. Very good abilities. If we moved him to corner, we might not have that anymore. Uh, Josh Jackson, let's take a look at the tackling. Josh Jackson with 64 tackling. Uh, way better zone than he is man. I think we're actually going to play... Derwin James at cornerback. I don't know what number he's going to be, but 39 is definitely not the number. All right, so fifth year options. Nick Bosa. I mean, I suppose we're just going to pay him, right? I mean, yes, I want him a long-term contract, but I do not want to pay him now because he's an okay overall now. He'll be probably like a 99 by the end of the year. Uh, no other. Okay, that's it. Ryan and Tannehill does join us back for a two-year deal. Not sure why you would do that, considering, uh, yeah, there's some issues. There's uh, definitely some uh, some issues on this team. And the quarterback position is one of them. So I guess he's like, I'll come on and, and play as the starter. I don't care. All right, time to start the draft. And as much as, ooh, hopefully they still have Rodgers. Because once again, we need to get a quarterback. And to get said quarterback, we will need to trade to the number one spot. We trade pick 32 this, 32 next year, Debo Samuel for the Packers' first pick overall. Oh, did I not tell you they also wanted our second round next year, third round this year, and Hobson on top of it? As much as that sucked, thankfully we developed uh, Debo because it sucked, but it could have been a lot worse. And we have a quarterback here, Tyron Roberts, looks like a very fast player, great throw power. Skills look amazing, right? Some of the best I've ever seen. 
But will he be a good quarterback? We'll find out now. And it says we reach. He was supposed to go 22. We took him number one. Tyron Roberts, 6'2", 220, 22 years old. And here are the ratings. Oof. 95 throw power, 79 deep. Great break sack. We've seen that on the list. Throwing the runs 87 and everything else is terrible. 65 medium, 65 short. Very fast, as we expected. Stamina off the charts. Injury, I think the highest you can go is like 99, though. Or maybe 97, 98 for rookies. Still really good, obviously. Not worried about that. Toughness, 86. A little worrisome. Spin move, not great. Juke move, decent. Elusiveness, decent. No trucking. Stiff arm is great. And very fast, obviously. Very, very fast. He's going to be a project. Hopefully, that hidden is superstar or maybe even X Factor. But... Even if it's not, it's still a really good pick. And the Patriots are probably happy that we traded. Well, maybe they're not. They might need a QB themselves. But it looks like our future is quote-unquote secured. It's going to be very questionable. But I think I think it's a good luck. We trade pick 64, 96, and Tony Brown for 25. And as per usual, it's never enough. Jalen Hurd and Adrian Colbert. We have a couple options at 25. What are we actually going to get? That's the question. Uh, we've traded a lot of assets, a lot, um, and you know, it's smart because we're still in that window. We still have that window. Ooh, this guy's looking decent. We still have the window of opportunity. Uh, thank God Walner's there. Now, the question is, it's between two guys. You have Devante Thornton, who looks really good, super fast, super beastly, potentially replaces D Ford in the future, or you get the guard that you desperately need, Curtis Walner. You know, you have a new quarterback. You need the best available. You do have Daniel McCain later on. Really beastly looking. But personally, I think you go O-line. So we're going to go Walner. And it's a great decision. Pick three was supposed to go. 25 is where we took him. Strength is a little bit on the lower side. And he is a little bit slower. Great Excel, which is weird. Great Excel, decent agility. That's usually the case. But the speed usually follows somewhat, right? But hey, it's a great pick. And I don't think anyone could really be mad at it. We'll have to see how that defensive end is because, obviously, it really would have been nice to have him. Overall, we just can't. It just can't be done. It just it couldn't. Cowboys with the... There he is. So, the uh, the Black Knights get him. 73 overall, probably hidden. Well, that pretty much ends the draft. Look to try to trade up for one final player and just couldn't do it. Did not have enough assets, and you guys can tell why. We basically traded the entire roster away for a quarterback and a guard Obviously, we could look at their developments, but we're going to leave that. Well, Walner's going to start, so I'll show you guys the development of Walner. Hoping for Superstar, we're going to get Star, unfortunately, with Undisciplined Penalty. That's not good. Of course, Tyron Roberts, I can't reveal it because it's it plays too much of a factor. I know he's going to start, but it'll be more fun to actually see it. He probably will, you know, pretty much reveal half of it just in the first, uh, you know, just in the preseason which we will play. Normally we wouldn't because, you know, the team's always going to be great. It's always going to be in a position where we know what we're getting into. But this one, that quarterback, man, there are questions, serious questions about whether he's going to be able to lead this team. It's definitely not going to be as impotent, and we're definitely not going to have as good of a season. Really good cornerback for the Cardinals there. Was there any other, like, things? Maybe, like, quarterback? Uh, there was no quarterback even close. The Packers used one of our picks to actually land this running back, Khalil Lockley, who is insanely fast. Uh, let's see what his uh, development is. That is a really good player. Looks a little weird, and his number sucks. But superstar development, great player. Looking at free agency, there are some running backs. We have the main three back in the starting lineup, though, so I don't think we really need to worry about that. We'll get Trey Hendrickson, though, because our backup uh, pass rushers aren't super solid right now. Uh, and, you know, just grab a, you know the usual... Backups. I'm surprised DJ Chark is here. I mean, why not, right? He's super fast. Still has time to develop at 25, which is insane to think about, but it is. We signed Joey Rushing, just a fast corner. We're going to sign Kirby Beal as a backup as well. Drayvon Johnson, potentially a safety at one point. I don't know, but it's pretty damn fast. All right, the lineup is set, and of course, the rookie quarterback will play few new faces uh, you know, on the offense. Offensive uh, line has a new guard, new center in place as well, and then a brand new quarterback. 
We also do have DJ Chark from Free Agency. His face looks hes so happy. He's like, I might win a Super Bowl. Don't count on it. Defensively, pretty much the same, except we have a couple of different backups. No uh, Bud Dupree, which is just saddening. And then you have Derwin James playing the number one corner spot. He should, in theory, be better than Richard Sherman. He definitely will hit people harder, and hopefully whatever side he's on, they won't be able to run the ball too well. So maybe he moves back to safety and Josh Jackson plays corner. We'll see. For right now, I think we're going to test this out, and we're going to play some preseason. All right, here we are starting the game off. Of course, defense did not do super hot, but Roberts is now in and first throw. Not bad at all. Probably a little risky playing the starters here. Uh, but let's uh, let's get this hurry up going. Let's see what we can do. Maybe this maybe it'll be even better. You know he's got a great strong arm. He's got great receivers and another perfect throw to Pettis. Already finding out the why Jimmy Graham loved uh, Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Garoppolo loved Pettis. He's just that dude. We're gonna try to avoid any injury we can. However, running the ball, we still need to get it going. Got two new linemen. Got to see how they fit. Which is ironic because they, they look very small. You look at the comparison between them and the rest of the players on the team. They look tiny. Look at them. Look at the inside. They're just not even close. And that is one of the things you're going to get. You know, a little bit of pressure. Look to roll out early, which is just not a good idea. But, you know, that's that's part of the rookie kinks of the thing. Realized wasn't going to get that edge. Tried to throw it, and it was inaccurate. This time looked like it was probably on target, but Aaron Donald, he's going to do Aaron Donald things. Swats the ball away, and it's going to lead to a field goal. Defense makes the stop yet again. Let's see if we can get some play action in. Haven't really set up the run, but there goes Pettis again. Perfect throw on the run across his body. The mechanics are a little raw. You know, some of the throws haven't been perfect, but so far not a bad debut. Rams corners are a little bit lacking. Definitely, you know, after especially after a bit, bit of time has passed here. Brita, not going to get much there, but still, pretty damn good defense from the Rams. Also looking at that offensive line, so far looking very good. Looking to run, and just a terrible throw on the run, and unfortunately also gets hit. I know we can't use him, you know, like uh, we're just scared. Did not take that many hits in college because of how fast he is, but obviously we're on another level now. This is uh, the speed of the NFL, and what a dot! The perfect throw for a touchdown. The first touchdown of his career so far is an absolute beauty. What a throw. Look at this dime on the money. Of course, Tannehill wanted to check the market, realized his market wasn't crazy great, and look at Derek go. He's gone. Derek Henry, a man amongst children, and he shows it. He just shows he's on another level, but, of course, with Brita healthy, it's hard to differentiate. We're just going to take a look at how the game finishes. The quarterback is sitting. Obviously, Tannehill and uh, the third string are going to be taking the rest of the snaps for the game. Can we still win, though? Whether it matters or not, we still want to win because we're just winners, and we do. First game after the Super Bowl is a victory. Of course, it's preseason, so it doesn't really count, but you still got to be happy with the performance. Player of the game goes to Quan Alexander. I mean, I'm fine with it. Don't know how Derrick Henry finished, but... I would have maybe put him on the damn uh, you know player of the game list. They played their youngster Holland very long in that game. Jared Goff, apparently the the starter still, even though this guy looks pretty damn good himself. Two touchdowns for Tannehill. Roberts not bad himself though with a perfect dime. And once again, I don't know how Derrick Henry doesn't get player of the game, but hey, whatever they say, and you know that's pretty much all the stats that really matter. A big thing, too, is we have some upgrades here. We got Mark Fox. We're going to go with Pass Protector. I think our ground game is good as long as we have one of the guys healthy. And obviously, we have the youngster quarterback that needs all the time he can get. We're going to go with Petrowski, do a route runner. Just because uh, I think route running is key, obviously. Stiff arm plus two. That's a weird one. Short, medium, and release. Re release is really bad. Short is really bad. And the medium's okay. Moving on to week two versus the Patriots. So we start with the ball at midfield after they attempted a fourth down and did not succeed. Roberts looking for the medium to deep ball, and he fits it in there perfectly. I thought Gilmore was definitely going to get a pick on that. Got to be wary some of that rookie man. The other problem is once we start playing teams with great pass rushers, that's, that's really where I worry. And he's going to be taken down by uh, Hightower. 
Obviously at the end of his career. Really just a coverage sack on that one. Second and 22. Probably not great to run it, but get better field position for a field goal. Try to set this up. You know, I want to set these up as real games. All right. That's that's all I want to set it up as. We're going to be looking to the RPO a little bit more this season as well. And inside, QT tries the dive for the end zone. Can't get it. Going to hurry up. Look for the quick throw. Nice sidearm there, but Kittle cannot bring it down. Really just chucked it as quick as we could. I thought maybe they'd back him off. Maybe thinking we were going to try to bluff him out with a run. Roberts, speaking of a potential run, looks like that right guard spot's pretty good. And he's not going to get it. What in the world is this game? We will go again and again and a damn again if we have to. Get in there. And he still can't get in there. What is wrong with us? Come on, Roberts. Two beastly running backs like this. Why not try to catch it off guard? A little back-footed, and obviously Burita's going to walk right in. I mean, he's, you know, improv improvisational skills. Not terrible. Got a blitz coming. Where is Derwin? Well, it's probably the guy with the superstar, huh? Got to press, boys. Press those boys. What? You can't say that. <laughs> that can't be the word you yell out, pal. Quan Alexander going for back-to-back. -back. Yes, he is. Back-to-back -back player of the week, potentially, here. All right. Second and two. This is your potential free play option, and yikes. Terrible throw there by Roberts. Obviously, he'll get better as the season goes on, but that's those are throws you just can't miss, especially not by that much. Those are potential picks. And you got the safety playing a little deeper. That could be a pick, potentially a pick six. Definitely some worries, but also a lot to be happy about. A late throw by us, and what a catch by Janu Smith. Who the hell is Carter? Number two. Set this up as a two-man route. Really good blocking there. Holy crap. Except for the inside. I was looking at the left side. McGlinchey was just crushing some dude. But the inside was terrible. All right, offensive line, you got to do better than this. Like, this is just this is starting to get embarrassing. That's a really good throw. A little bit of pass interference, and they might actually. It looks like they might have called it. Got a little bumpy, and Jesus, McGlinchey. They are, in fact, going to call pass interference. A little handsy there for my liking as well, and you know, I'm actually a little surprised they called it, but they did, and Roberts is still yet to throw a pick. Obviously, the regular season's all that we care about anyways. Preseason's just to test out the waters. Who the hell is Carter? That guy gives me freaking nightmares, man. And that's a little overthrown. Pettis tries to catch into Roberts. Those are just plays you can't miss. You're going to learn... That when you do miss them, you're going to feel like garbage. So, for your sake, for your sake, the team's sake. And once again, another one. That one's a lot harder, so I'm not going to blame them. But that's another opportunity. Of course, with Roberts being out, we will let the game play on. And we're actually having a really good game. 31-6, to 38-6. to 6. Ryan Tannehill really trying to fight for a damn starting job. I mean, the money we paid him, he definitely didn't seem like he was interested in the starting job, but I don't know, man, I, I guess. Looking at the stats once again, Tannehill with his one touchdown, zero interceptions. Uh, Roberts, not terrible himself in a little bit more playing time this week. Rushing once again, Derrick Henry showing up. Of course, playing against the second stringer, so he's pretty much going to bully them around. He bullies around starting players, so what do you think he's going to do with the backups? That's why his numbers look so damn good. Brita, I expect to do really well during the regular season, but if he doesn't, you know, we still have Derrick Henry, who I forgot to mention, did go to X-Factor. Another upgrade for Petrowski. Okay. All right, I mean, I'll take it. Routner does not go to 79, which sucks, because obviously once he gets to 80, he will have his first ability, and that's where you really become elite. Kiki QT about to reach 85, and he does. Nice. Route runner for him as well. He gets plus... So everyone just gets stiff arm with route running. What's his stiff arm anyways? 50s. Excuse me. We're going to go with a run support for Sean Pierce, and that concludes the upgrades for now. Really wanting some, uh, some block shed, though. You know? This will be the final preseason game for us because most of the starters will be sitting just to give them a little bit extra breather from, you know, all the hits of the preseason. You know, that's a little bit of, you know, luckily we haven't had any injuries, but 
that's the dangers of playing your guys for the full first quarter of every single preseason game is that they are going to take some bruisings and you know there's really no reason to so we'll give them that final week to rest and hopefully that should be good enough and Jesus Roberts you cannot miss that that's that's unbelievable that's just yeah we might lose a lot of games this season <laughs> I'm just saying and then he hits that throw perfectly to Kittle damn I will say if there's anyone in the league that could use you know any rookie in the league that uh, you know starting out this guy is easily the luckiest by far he might be the only one starting Back in the end zone, finds Kittle. There you go. Pretty much the all George Kittle route. Uh, or drive, anyways. Really good play. Defense absolutely locking up there. That was brilliant stuff. There he goes, Brita slipping away with some of those slippery juke moves. Going to go for Pettis. Von Miller, not an easy guy to block. But we're actually doing a pretty good job on him. He's just going to chuck this up. That's not a terrible throw. I mean, it was picked off, right? But it's not a terrible throw. We're testing it out. Don't get in there, quarterback. Okay, never mind. Tackle them all you want, I guess. <laughs> I don't really think you need to be worrying about picks in general. First pick, technically. But yeah, just don't worry about that, especially in preseason. A lot riding on your shoulders. We traded quite a bit to get you. It would be a real shame if uh, we didn't get to see if it was worth it or not until year two. Which we might not even see in general. And... That easily should have been another pick. I believe it was Verrett last time that had a pick on it. Ray Brita, can you bounce it? Pretty damn close. Slipping away. Gets about 15 yards. I'm telling you guys, nobody wanted to believe me. Everyone's like, hey, Derrick Henry, man. No, it's Matt Brita time. And you guys seen everyone can get injured on this damn roster. So I'm just going to play who's best until somebody gets injured, I guess. And there's a really good throw to Pettis who could have the edge. And he will score. Wow. Okay. That throw power, once, if the ball is accurate, that throw power really shows off. And obviously right there, we saw it. Potentially the final drive for Roberts, who's had a very good preseason game here. Now he's hitting some throws. He's missing some. You know, some have been poor, but overall very good. Play action look. And if we get the blocks, we could score. And that, I mean, that's not an easy throw to make. If he does make it, though, he probably has the step for the touchdown. Not going to be a throw we require him to make just yet. But with the pressure there, he really didn't have much time to set his feet. Sometimes that's just the best you're going to get. There you go. Perfect throw and a perfect block by Brita. God damn. Quick throw and completely missed. I mean, it's like every four decent throws, he has one extremely poor one which I mean it's better than you know that than like you know two for two or something once again there he goes he's missing one really poorly and then hits several in a row perfectly I mean I'll take it whatever whatever gets the job done but yeah his uh, his season's gonna require a lot of defense because there's gonna be some picks this season no doubt about it no one really open gets a really good throw there and Bradley Chubb, you know, out of his element there, not really expecting to cover. Plays a really good job, but never turns around for the ball, and we are able to use that to fit in a really good pass on the run. That's a really good throw. Easily his best throw of the preseason. I know he had that great, great first touchdown to Petrowski, but this one is immaculate. This one is perfect. He's got the press. He sees Von Miller there. He's got to get rid of it. Takes the hit. And it is an absolute beauty for the score. And, of course, that will be the game. Intercepted already. Is that, is that Tannehill? That will be the game. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot to be proud of. A lot to be proud of going into week one of the regular season. Will he be able to do the job? Who freaking knows? But... I definitely have a lot of faith to come out with the victory, whether it's pretty or not. That's not our concern. It's just we need to hit on all of the routes in the defense and all that. And the only issue we should have is maybe O-line and quarterback play. Outside of that, I don't want any issues 
and I think we should easily take care of business. You know, better game this time for Brita, 14 for 80, 5.7 per, zero touchdowns, but that's fine. Derrick Henry a little bit worse this time, probably played against the uh, the second stringers, while also Brita playing against the second stringers, which, you know, where that's where the numbers come from. Three touchdowns and a pick, not terrible for Mr. Roberts, can't lie. When did Tannehill play? Did they play the third stringer more? I mean, I guess we're going to be setting up Tannehill for week four to play pretty much the entire game, so I guess it makes sense. Hopefully Roberts has an upgrade himself. He does. This is a big one. The first upgrade of Mr. Tyron Roberts' young and hopefully long career, I think, should easily go to field general. And what do we get? Two medium and a deep. Why would we need deep exactly? I mean, I guess 80 is not crazy good, but 80 deep. 67 medium now. He's already better. Already look, look at him. Already going. Curtis Walner looking kind of like George Kittle himself a little bit there. Is that not George Kittle? Strength one, run block one. I'm not, I gotta look at George Kittle. Is that not George Kittle's? Like, it's very freaking close. I know not in real life, but his model. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Never mind. He looks similar to somebody then. I don't know. I've, I don't know. But, obviously, let's go on to week one. 4-0 and oh in preseason. Of course, no breakouts yet. It'd be cool if they added quarterback ones, but obviously they won't. Uh, our goal is going to be to make the playoffs regardless. Obviously, the main goal is Super Bowl, but playoffs at least, right? Congratulations on the victory. Yes, yes, yes. 4-0 and in preseason. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like we're going to get over-freaking excited. Of course. I mean, we got to we gotta say we're going to neutralize them. Whether or not we actually will, we have to. That's the main goal here. And uh, rack up 400 combined yards with zero. Okay, dude. Who do you think we are? Going against Chicago week one. Probably not the best case. But, yeah, it's going to be Chicago, which is a tough pass rush, tough defense to play against. Then the Falcons, not the easiest defense, but pass rush should be a little bit more mild than you go right back to a great pass rush. Cardinals, Chandler Jones at this point probably isn't super great, so back to easy. And then the Rams, that's going to be a tough one. We played well in preseason, but preseason is a completely different beast. And, yeah, we're still a good team, but you guys know the story. Is it going to be rookie quarterback woes? What's going to be the answer week two? I don't know. Let's find out. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. This one was a fun one for me, and it's a lot more exciting, I think. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of the whole situation. And do you think Roberts is going to be the guy, or will he get benched for Tannehill? Could you imagine? Whew. Hopefully we stay healthy, and hopefully you guys uh, stay happy. I don't freaking know. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!